Welcome to Sinful's Horror Stories. If you're new to the channel, please be sure to subscribe now for future content. Be sure to turn on all your notifications so you don't miss a single video. Please make sure to leave a like on the video, because this helps my channel grow immensely. Thank you guys for all the supportive comments. I do read each and every one of them, and try to reply to most when I have time. Email your true scary stories too. The Sinful Savant at gmail.com to have a chance to be featured on an upcoming video. Sit back, relax, and stay sinful. Okay, so this story is a bit different than most of the ones I see around here, but it's been on my mind for quite a while now, so I really wanted to share it. The scene takes place in the late 90s when my mom decided she was tired of living in a big city. She bought us a house on the countryside. She'd always been a loner and was desperate for some peace and quiet, so she found a house in a very small village that was in really bad condition and decided to handle all the renovation by herself. She quickly realized it was too much and started asking around the village if someone could help her out. Quite quickly, she met Daniel and he offered to do most of the manual labor for a very cheap price. Daniel was a very simple man. He never went outside the village and wasn't educated at all. He could barely read. But my mom was a teacher and she, but my mom was a teacher and she saw something in him. Despite the lack of education and knowledge, she knew almost right away that this man was extremely intelligent. He just had no idea. So she started giving him books, helping him perfect his reading and writing skills. He was an extremely fast learner, and in a few months he was a different man completely. He came over every day to talk to her, read and sometimes work on the house. He also helped her through her pregnancy and helped out when I was a baby. I wish the story would end here, but it doesn't. The way he talked and his opinions and thoughts about the world had changed, and it made him very different from everyone else in the village, including his own family. People who were teasing him about it at first started to really resent him. They were mean and stopped talking or interacting with him in any way because they thought he had become presumptuous and arrogant. My mom was the only one who still talked to him. So... He started to resent her for changing him and started to drink a lot to dull his mind. He got drunk every day hoping he would get back to where he was and would be accepted by everyone again. But of course that's not how it works. When I turned four, my mom told him we were going back to the city so I could attend a good school and we'd probably be back once in a while. And he snapped. Not only did she give him a poisonous gift that was ruining his life, she was leaving him all alone with absolutely no one else to talk to. That day he left screaming, and a few hours later his car crashed into our garden. I remember my mom being very calm and telling me to go hide under her bed upstairs. I rushed upstairs and looked through the window. I saw him coming out of his car with difficulty. He was mildly hurt by the crash, but mostly super drunk and angry. My mom was walking towards him when he swung out a huge axe and she came running inside. She locked the door and phoned the police. He started yelling that he'd kill us and destroy our car with his axe. When he was done, he started destroying the door. He came in, climbed up the stairs, and used the axe to destroy my mom's bedroom door. The police arrived before he managed to get through. They arrested him and he died a few days later. I think it was liver failure or something like that. I honestly don't know if he would have killed us. And I don't know if he loved my mom. That's all a mystery. I'm still very scared every time I think about it. And axes scare me to death. I worked at a law firm in a fairly large U.S. city. I lived one block from work and therefore walked every day. About a half mile in the other direction was a restaurant I truly loved. One evening, after a crappy day, I decided to go out to dinner before going home. 
I went to the restaurant, had dinner, and started the walk home. It was dusk at this point, but there was still plenty of light. The street was deserted, except for a single car traveling in the opposite direction. The car suddenly slammed on its brakes, and I was very surprised. I stopped walking. I expected it to be someone asking for directions or something, but instead it was two guys staring right at me. The driver was literally hanging out of the window and licking his lips. I was very deliberately rolling my eyes and kept walking. I had walked most of the way back to my office when I got a weird feeling, like someone was watching me. I looked over my shoulder and the same car was there, a couple of feet behind me. They'd flipped a U-turn, cut their engine, and coasted down the street behind me. The passenger was closer to me, now, and he was leaning a little out of the window making gross faces at me. I didn't think, I just started running. I heard the car start up and follow me. I was close to home, but I didn't want to lead these guys to where I live. I ran down the rest of the street and through an intersection. I made it to the parking structure for my office building which had an entrance into the building itself with security in the lobby. I hung out in the lobby with the security guy and checked outside again and again until I was sure the car wasn't there anymore. Then I ran the one block home. I think about those guys every time I walk alone now. I live alone in a bad neighborhood just outside of the city. At this point, I had been living there for maybe three years with no incident. Well, I mean, there were several shootings on my street, but no one shot at me, so no incident, I guess. I'm the kind of person who can't sit still for very long, so I find myself standing or pacing a lot. On this particular night, maybe at about 2 a.m., I was pacing while reading a textbook to prepare for an upcoming test at my university. I stopped pacing for a little while and just stood near my front door to read. That's when I heard my doorknob turn. For some reason though, I nearly shit myself. I was able to calmly look down at the deadbolt to double check that it was locked. It was. I looked through the peephole to see who was trying to come inside, but no one was standing there. Obviously this was confusing. I neither am superstitious nor a believer in the supernatural, but I'm also stupid, so my first thought was, is a ghost trying to break into my house? Thankfully that would have gave way to a more logical thought of, maybe they're going around back. So, I quickly moved to the back door to make sure it was locked. It was, but then my front doorknob started turning again and again. I tiptoe slash ran to the front door. At this point, my heart was pounding. My dog, big protective teddy bear, is looking at me with major concern in his eyes. I look out the front peephole again, but there's still no one there. That's when I hear a small knock on my door as I'm looking through the peephole. Then a small childish voice says, Let me in. Silence. Let me in. I'm still looking through the peephole while covering my mouth with my hand to make my breathing quieter. Through the peephole, I see a small three-year-oldish girl walk to the edge of my porch and look into my bushes. She nods and says, Okay, in what I think was supposed to be a whisper. She walks closer to the door again and I lose sight of her in the peephole. She tries the handle again, then knocks and says, Please help me. My uncle is a cop, so I heard about people using children as a way to get people to open their door before blitz attacking. So I'm pretty sure that's what's happening at this point. I wasn't sure how to handle this situation, so I just, not even into a phone. Hi, I think someone is trying to break into my apartment. Yeah, my address. 123 Fake Street Avenue. Yeah, I'll stay on the line. I then saw a shadow emerge from my bushes. Thankfully, they scooped the kid and ran off. There were two people and the child. 
People who tried to break into my apartment to rob or kill me. Let's not meet again. I'm writing this only a few hours after everything happened. Now that I've calmed down and the sun is coming up, I feel somewhat safer. Last night I was laying in bed, reading a little before I went to sleep. I think it's important to clarify that I live on the outskirts of my town. Still in town, but definitely on the edge, off the highway that leads out of town and into about a 15 mile stretch of country. Woods, fields, a few residences, but mostly open highway. So other than the other tenants in my actual apartment building, it's normally very quiet in my area. My building is square with four apartments, and for each of us our door simply faces out into the open. There's no lobby or foyer or anything. My door in particular looks out into a large field that goes up a hill. I don't remember the exact time, but sometime between 1 and 2 a.m., someone randomly started banging on my door, which freaks me out at the best of times in broad daylight, but especially in the middle of the night. I nervously went to ask who it was, and this guy with a deep voice claimed he was a police officer, and that I needed to let him in at once. That's what he said. I needed to let him in. Not that I needed to open the door. Luckily, I watch and listen to a lot of true crime stuff, so I got pretty suspicious very quickly. I just got near instant alarm bells because he couldn't tell me why I needed to let him in, what I supposedly did, and he never asked what my name was. He also didn't really sound like a cop, if you know what I mean. Obviously, I was feeling creeped out, so I decided to call 911 to confirm that there was an actual officer at my address, and they said there wasn't. At this point, I'm freaking out, and I kind of call out through the door that I'm on the phone with the police, and the guy just bangs on my door one more time, then stops making noise. I presume because he ran off at this point. They dispatched two cars to my apartment and the officers took a good look around. Unfortunately, the guy was long gone by the time they got there, and I never saw him, so I don't have a description of him or anything. But the cops said two things to make me feel better. One, they would post more patrols in my area over the weekend. And two, it was most likely just a prank because a bar down the street from my apartment had a party, and it had just closed not too long before. Always trust your instincts, and remember that if you have any doubts about someone claiming to be an officer, call 911 and confirm that they are who they say they are. Dispatch and the officers who came tonight told me you will not get in trouble for making sure the person talking to you is actually an officer. This also applies to situations where it's nighttime and dark, so you can't really see for sure if it's a real cop car behind you or not. If you see flashing lights behind you on a back road or dark area at night, put on your hazard lights and call 911 first to make sure it's actually a police car. You won't get in trouble. Better safe than sorry. Thank you guys for watching. Please be sure to leave a like on the video. Comment, share, and subscribe for future content. Comment on the comment section below your theme ideas for upcoming videos. I want your input on everything that I post on this channel. Email your stories to thesinfulsavant at gmail.com. I will leave a link to my email in the description box below as well. Till we meet again, stay sinful.